Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Lidrich Kreuzer, and today I'll be presenting my work with Rudolf Berger uh, entitled Unequal Partners, the Determinants and Consequences of Intra-Household Inequality in South Africa. So usually when we do microeconomic research, uh, our main unit of account is the household. In inequality research, what this means is that we are focusing on the inter-household inequality and not really focusing on, int on the intra-household dimensions. Some estimates suggest that we are greatly underestimating consumption inequality when we do this. So understanding household decision making can help us design policies to better target the most vulnerable members of society and it also can give us insights into some other important um, microeconomic uh, aspects such as the labor supply, human capital investments and fertility and so on. So like with these motivations in mind, our research questions are much less ambitious. So we're asking four questions. The first is, is the unitary model of household behavior making valid for South African households? If it's not, is the collective model valid? Um, if, we, if, we, is the, if the collective model is indeed valid, can the effect of bargaining power be seen in the expenditure on consumption items? And then also, which factors uh, affect the bargaining power of different household members? And can gender preferences for goods be observed? So the outline of this discussion will be briefly as follows. I'll start with the theoretical model. I'll continue to the econometric model. Then we'll discuss the data and the results. So we start by considering a two-adult household um, with a wife and a husband. We have a, house, a household member that consumes a vector of private consumption goods. These are goods that are excludable but not necessarily assignable. Um, this is mainly an assumption we make due to the data. Um, the two members jointly consume public goods. Each member has their own preference, preference relation, um, preferences denoted by vector A, and each member has their own utility, which may be dependent on her own uh, consumption of private goods, the spouse's um, consumption of private goods, public goods, and preferences. And then uh, so consumption is then constrained by the household budget, um, as, norm as normally. So the household function can be used to express as the weighted average of the mem member's utility, and we see this new term, um, this, this um, theta over here, um, and then this is dependent on, this may be dependent on total income of the household, uh, the preference factors of the household, and distribution factors. Um, a distrib uh, this burrito weight represents the decision power or the utility weight of the member in total household utility. So the burrito weight may be potentially determined by then this vector of distribution factors. Distribution factors are variables that do not enter household, the household budget constraint, nor do they enter preferences of the individual members, um, but they may affect the bargaining power of each household members. Where we assume some separability between private and public goods, along with the usual technical assumption on individual utilities, we may rewrite private good demands as in this equation here. So um, private good demands are then just some function of income, preferences, and distribution factors. I merely distinguish, I distinguish between these two things to um, these two forms to just show in, in cross-section data where we do not have any price um, variation. We can't, can't really distinguish between variation and this burrito weight that, are, that is due to the income or also preferences, but we, but we do know that these distribution factors are not supposed to enter the household uh, demand function individually and directly. So the unitary model of household behavior assumes that the household behaves as if individual preferences can be aggregated into a stable household preference relation. And this is very convenient for economic analysis because this means that when we observe the household and we observe aggregate data, we can just use this and go on and, everything, and all our results would be very accurate. But this also implies a very strong and testable restriction for household behavior, um, namely distribution factor independence. This means that the household, the household, demand, the household demands are not dependent on changes in distribution factors, so rather factors that only affect the burrito weights of, of the two household members. Uh, this is, uh, is also known sometimes as the income pooling hypothesis and has been overwhelmingly reje rejected in empirical studies. Against the collective model of household behavior, we assume that individual members have their own preferences and that the outcome of household decisions are burrito efficient. So this basically means that, that the bargaining power of household members can affect household consumption outcomes but only through a one-dimensional effect on decision weights, and this is the burrito weight. This basically means that for all distribution factors that yield the same burrito weight, we should expect the same effect on household consumption. This provides a cross-equation cross restriction known as the proportionality condition that can be used to test the model. This restriction over here has been known to be necessary and sufficient to identify the collective model of household behavior, at least since Bergenion's 1993 paper. So, 
a bit, maybe a bit easier way to understand the collective model is as though households behave as if making decisions according to a two-stage process. In the first stage, the household decides what proportion of, of um, expenditure is allocated to each member according to the burrito weight. And in the second step, it is how is individual demand for private goods determined then by this burrito weight. So this is basically seen here. So in this case, the effect of the female share on expenditure is basically the change in the burrito weight due to a change in the, burrito, uh, in the distribution factor. And this is um, the yeah, effect of the burrito weight. And then the difference in the two shares um, due to changes in the burrito weight is then distribution factor invariance. So we, should, we would expect... So this is commodity invariance, so we would expect this change to be the case for all commodities, and then this for distribution factors. So the initial um, empirical studies uh, used relative incomes as distribution factors, but there might be, might be some endogeneity there, as we might think that a household that has a member that might be more efficient or more productive in, in employment, the household would just prefer that member to do the work and the, and the other household member to be in to to house, household um, work. So uh, aid and education difference are similarly problematic. So more recent uh, studies tend to look at distribution factors that uh, affect outside opportunities of the spouses or give us an indication of the spouse's wealth before marriage. So there's widespread uh, empirical support for the collective model. So at least in France, Canada, India, Mexico, I'm also aware of England and a few other countries that has received that has received report just to um, support just to name a few, and there's also two studies by Browning and others uh, that attempt to estimate relative gender preferences for different commodities. Uh, it's shown that wives generally have a stronger preference for clothing, personal services, and recreation, whereas husbands care more about food, alcohol, tobacco, and transportation. So onto the econometric model. So uh, we model the demand for a good I in terms of the specification one over year. So demand demand for a good is dependent on preference factors household income in this uh, quadratic term and then a, I think it's a quasi-quadratic um, specification of the distribution factors. We use status seemingly, unre uh, seemingly unrelated regression estimator to estimate the model pra parameters and we control for factors such as uh, children in the household, ownership of home or car, the rural or urban status of the household, the race of the household head and they will also include variables um, for the individual household members including their age, education level, the hours work and whether or not they are employed. Our distribution factors in our preferred specification is the local gender share of, of, the, of the husband and of yeah, the local gender share of males in the area and the maternal education share. So local uh, gender share is just basically the unmarried married men in the district council over unmarried women in the district council. And then the husband's maternal education share is the male's mother's years of education over the sum of both spouses' years of education. Uh, if the unitary model is um, indeed um, an accurate depiction of the data, we would expect all of these coefficients to be zero. Uh, the, the proportionality condition implies that either equation two or three must be nested within the, the equation I just showed you. So we re-estimate these equations uh, using the non seemingly unrelated regression estimator, and then we use the likelihood ratio test to test whether or not they are or if, whether or not they are indeed nested in equation one. So I'm going to focus mainly on equation two due to time. And if, if this equation is valid, then it's, it's convenient to, or perhaps convenient, to interpret the results in terms of the sharing rule and individual demands. So we would see that uh, since lambda is distribution factor independent, so this is this variable here, um, we expect it to be equal to the impact of changes in the sharing rule on household demand for the item and then if the effect of distribution factor and the effect of the distribution factors on the sharing rule is given by what is inside the brackets over here. So the data we use, we use wave one of uh, the National Income Dynamics Study, and we try to um, restrict the sample to control for as much variation that we won't necessarily be able to control for by just uh, popping in dummies into the equations. We restrict the household uh, to two adult household members uh, that are different gender, either married or co-owning partners, between the ages of 25 and 65, and where the household head is male. Um, this is also done because this is what we see mostly in the data. We include households with up to three children, since um, the ob observation of all of these, th all of the variables we use, um, restricts the sample greatly. 
and we use a seven broadly defined uh, consumption categories, namely communication, clothing, entertainment, food, medical expenditure, personal care, and alcohol and tobacco. Locals' gender share is then calculated by using data from the 2001 census, which we then merge by district council to the NEDS data, as this data is available. So this is just uh, some, some of the summary statistics that I won't go over now. Uh, so for the unrestricted uh, model, I'm going to go through the preference factors and distribution factors since uh, they are broadly similar, or well, the preference factors at least is broadly similar to the results we see for the uh, restricted model. So we see broadly that children are correlated with higher food and clothing expenditure, lower entertainment expenditure. We see that households residing in rural areas uh, spend less on lower cl on clothing and personal care. We see that asset ownership is associated with increased expenditure on entertainment, communication, medical and personal care. And we see that households with better educated household heads tend to spend more on medical, uh, entertainment, and communication. So in terms of the distribution factors, we see that, that uh, the local sex ratio, along with its quadratic term and interaction with total income, is jointly significant. And we see that the maternal education share is, um, and all its interactions is also jointly significant, along with, and all distribution factors are also jointly significant. So we fairly comfortably reject the unitary model of household behavior. So this is a bit more difficult, so I'm just going to start here at the bottom. So this is the proportionality condition. So this is the LR test statistic of whether or not equation 2 that we saw earlier is nested within equation 1. So uh, we cannot reject the hypothesis that the collective model of household behavior, or we cannot reject the proportionality rule, and thus we cannot reject that the collective model of household behavior um, is accurate in South African data. We see that household maternal education share, local sex ratio, and both distribution factors are jointly significant. And then, just to give an idea of what's going on here, we see um, we normalize the, the um, seemingly unrelated regression on clothing, so that these variables over a year give us an indication of the relative impact of the different variables um, that affect bargaining power on, on the outcome. So, we would expect communication to be more affected, but in the same direction as clothing, clothing is affected by the distribution factors. Uh, personal care and medical and medical care is expenditure are also positively correlated and, and very close to clothing. We then see entertainment and food expenditure are insignificant, and we see alcohol and tobacco is negatively correlated with it. Uh, negative, and I think this is just above the 10% level of uh, significance. So what, what, for this one, what it means is that if husband's maternal education share in the household increases, for example, we would expect alcohol and tobacco expenditure to increase. So yeah, this is just going through what I just said. And this is the relative impact of the sharing rule on consumption item expenditure. So this maybe gives a more intuitive, uh, intuitive um, presentation of, of the results. So what, what this graph shows us is we use the d-mean values of, or the mean values of all of the variables, including the other distribution factors, to draw these graphs. And this is normalized on, on um, clothing still. So what we see here is as husband maternal education share increases, we would expect female bargaining power, which we, which we assume is, is the case since um, most of the variables in, like, seem to indicate that because that we would normally expect from other literature that is associated with female bargaining power or female preferences. Um, it's correlated with this. We see a dramatic reduction in, in bargaining power every year um, as, um, in terms of clothing expenditure. And as outside options, which we model by local sex ratio, increases, we see that it's slightly, it's slightly female bargaining power also slightly increases. We also see that um, the model is dramatically almost in favor of, of male bargaining powers. We see a, very, a much more dramatic drop from year to year and from year to there. So we cannot, if, we cannot ever um, really so to say that this is all causal, but uh, we, do, we do test some other specifications on these results. So uh, the net data set is um, very informative as it gives us um, some indication of which household member is responsible or if the household identifies which member is responsible for, let's say, day-to-day -day expenditure items. Um, and we show that, we can show that in the probe that, that the distribution factors are significantly correlated in the same direction on the probability that, that uh, the female is the main decision maker on day-to-day -day household expenditure. Further, 
uh, the collective model of also be, in the collective model of household behavior, distribution factors should affect consumption patterns of married couples, but not singles. So um, what we did is we basically re redid the uh, effect of distribution factors on, on, on singles as well. We normalized um, the husband maternal, maternal education share to the unit interval, and then we and then we just looked at the at the significance levels, and we see that for both single men and single women the significance of distribution, the distribution factors are not significant in explaining their consumption of items. We then also go on to test other distribution factors. So we added a third distribution factor in the model to gauge how female bargaining power may be affected and whether the collective model is still valid. So we look at the um, income difference of the household during childhood, whether the husband, mother, husband's mother worked, marital status, living in a rural area, ground share, hourly wage share, and so on. Well, the rest. And this is the result that we see. So we only, yeah, it seems like it cut a bit there, but it's, I don't think it's an important one. Um, so what we see here is the only, the only ones that are really significant are the num is the number of young children. So the average partial effect and the total effect of the distribution factor still remain significant, although it's not as, as high as in the previous regression. And we do not reject the proportionality test, but this is also, again, at a fairly low level, just above the 5% level, we're unable to reject the portion of the hypothesis. Um, we, see, we see significance for log wage difference of the spouses, and we see significance for the child support grant, which is mainly uh, received by f the female household member. So conclusions, uh, the unitary model of household behavior is rejected for South African households, and we see evidence in favor of the collective model. Uh, we see that household bargaining power is determined by various factors and it is important that it affects consumption outcomes in an observable way. Uh, we see that male household members are estimated to have the strongest relative preference for alcohol, tobacco, then followed by food and entertainment, while increases in female bargaining power is associated with uh, increases in communication, followed by clothing, personal care and medical care. Um, yeah, thank you. This is my presentation. I'm getting a bit faster than I thought.